the Beach Mental and Emotional Health Podcast. My name is Miranda and joining me today is Megan with the City's Office of Volunteer Resources and Recovery and we have Jen with BBCPS's Department of Family and Community Engagement. Thank you guys both so much for being here today. Um, if you could go ahead and introduce yourselves. Megan, why don't you go sure. first? Thanks for having us. Um, as she said, my name is Megan Kenyon. I am a Resiliency Recovery Analyst with the City Manager's Office of Volunteer Resources and Recovery. A little bit of duality in that office, so one half of us focuses on volunteer engagement, volunteerism, training, and then management of volunteers and the volunteer managers. And then the other side, the side that I work on, is the Office of Recovery. So we do all of the aftermath of the 531, et cetera. Hey, and Jen. Great. Well, thank you for having me, Miranda. Uh, I am with the Office of Family and Community Engagement, which falls under the Department of Communications. And our main task is to make sure and support all the schools and provide students with all the information that they need to ensure their success. With the Office of Family and Community Engagement, we were a very different um, office before the pandemic. Like we supported events, for example, Teacher of the Year, Volunteer of the Year, et cetera, et cetera. But now when the pandemic hit, there's a lot of study that showed just lack of family engagement and also a lot of kids obviously weren't going to school. So our roles and our responsibility has shifted. So what we do now is really just provide um, support, build a relationship with the schools and especially in the in the um, the field and realm of language access, that's been a really big part of our endeavors because we have um, four other critical languages besides English in Virginia Beach, and that is Tagalog, Spanish, Mandarin, and Vietnamese. And I was hired because I speak Mandarin, so that's been very enlightening because I grew up here and. Um, my family didn't have access to any information. So that's been very gratifying to, yeah. you know, working as a team to be able to provide everyone with the same information and the same opportunities. The Office of Volunteer Resources and Recovery, that second piece, was born out of the tragedy that happened um, at Municipal Center on May 31st in 2019. So our office is driving things behind the Permanent Memorial Committee. We are planning and executing those remembrance events. This past one was the first one that we were able to hold since it happened and then COVID kind of shut everything down. We are streamlining that workers compensation process with all the other departments, consolidated benefits, EAP, human resources to better aid employees and volunteers to get access for psychological as well as physical injuries that sustain in the workforce. And then my specific job is geared around the federal grant that helped create the VB Strong Center with its reporting and all of the efforts that were done following the immediate tragedy. So we work mostly on like those resiliency efforts for employees and the community as well. We support employees who were both in the building that day, helping identify who could have been there that day, any workforce member that's been affected by it, and then furthermore into the community as well. So anyone who has psychological or emotional trauma stemming from that incident, we're working on a process to get them better help. Sounds like both of your offices play a vital role in our community in getting people connected with resources that can really help them in their time of need. Um, and today we're going to be talking about community and why it's so important and how to build a strong one. Um, our community plays an important role in our everyday life and shaping that um, and we need our community to re rely on in both good times and bad um, and it's important to note that not everybody is well rooted within their community. I wanted to share some statistics that I came across from the American Psychological Association website um, that just really drive this point home. So a survey from 2018 showed that loneliness levels had reached an all-time high Nearly half of 20,000 U.S. adults reported they sometimes or always feel alone. And then 40% of survey participants also reported that they sometimes or always feel that their relationships are not meaningful and that they feel isolated. That's close to 50%. <laughs> That's a really high number. And it's important to note that these surveys were taken before the pandemic hit. As you guys mentioned, there was a huge shift in our focus because of the impact that the pandemic had on community, our personal lives. Um, 
So I can't imagine what those numbers would be like if we were to repeat those studies today. I'm sure it'd be a lot higher. So at first glance, we may not realize just how much our community affects our mental and emotional health. There is evidence linking how isolated you feel with adverse health consequences, such as depression, poor sleep quality, um, impaired executive function, accelerated cognitive decline, and poor cardiovascular function, and impaired immunity at every stage of life. So overall can really impact your physical and emotional well-being. Last statistic I'll share with you, but studies have also found a link between frequent loneliness and dissatisfaction with one's family, social, and community life. One study stated that one in five Americans who say they are not satisfied with the quality of life in their local communities feel frequent loneliness. So yeah, I feel like these statistics really do highlight just how important your offices are in getting people connected with those resources. Let's go ahead and talk about building that stronger community. Resiliency is a word that we hear so much these days with everything that's going on in the world, around the nation, it's, it's, it's a strong word. And it's hard to put a definition on, I feel. I think it stems from being able to not just overcome something that happens outside pressures or circumstances that can be problematic, anything that really tries and challenges a person or a community or an office or a group of people to be resilient means to kind of just to bend with those pressures and to, to be able to bounce back or almost all the way bounce back and adapt and overcome and kind of come out a little bit stronger if possible. I mean, you never want to have to be resiliency because you don't want to have to be put in a situation that, that challenges you in such a way that it's overwhelming, but resilient meaning you're stronger for it. You, you grow, you learn, you can come together as like a, almost a collective, which was just very important, especially for our community, because we did. I mean, that, you look at what happened, and Virginia Beach really did come together. They showed that they were more resilient, and that was the theme of this memorial ceremony that we held, was together we're resilient. So. I agree with everything Megan is saying. Um, I think for me, in our office, resiliency comes in the form of perseverance, right? Like. Um, you can only get so much done by yourself, but if you can get many people to brainstorm, to unpack, to, to think of good ideas, it will always work out in some way, form, form or another, right? And you might fail the first time, the second time, the third time, but the whole process of failing, you'll still learn something new. And I think that's um, the strength in a positive team. I, I love my team at FACE because we are that kind of people, you know, like even when it's, we don't get the, 100% expected result. We still learn a lot of tools along the way, and maybe I didn't see that, but you might chime in, you know? So we're constantly picking ourselves up, dusting ourselves off, and just keep moving. And I think that's what builds character. If it doesn't work with this path, well, let's try another path, you know? And um, it's really helped our office in that way. We were, nobody really knew about us in the beginning, you know? But over time, people are like, oh, I've heard of you, I've heard of you. So. Yeah, it's a camaraderie and just like always seeing the silver lining in the bright side and always learning even from the quote unquote failures. So. I love that you said it's a tool. You always hear about starting a new job. Oh, what's in your toolbox? And I think yeah. resiliency to be added to the toolbox. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So resiliency, you know, keeping the learning mindset and to keep pressing on and figure out how to make things, improve things better. Absolutely. Um, relying on the people around you to help you with that. Volunteerism, I mean, Virginia Beach is huge, huge for the, its community volunteer programs. Getting out there, talking to people, I mean, for building community resources, I think just being engaged, being involved in your community. You mentioned isolation. Like, it's so easy to feel isolated, especially in a place that survived a pandemic or you were trapped inside or you just moved here. And I mean, being Hampton Roads, this is a huge transit town. You have military coming and going, families coming and going. The, all the different languages that people speak here, it can be very isolating to have all of this and none of this at the same time. So just being aware of that, going out, talking to people, making those connections, it, it's vital, it's important. It can help curb that isolation just a little bit. Absolutely. Well, 
Well, the opposite of isolation is being part of a community, right? And that is basically, um, that's in our name, family and community yeah. engagement. And if we look through the lens of our department, I would say that the first marker to developing a relationship, um, a community, is actually developing that trust, right? And just like any relationship, you have to learn to be, to still yourself, to get quiet, and really learn to listen. Um, so that's what we do. We try to go into schools who want to work with us, and we just have a very open um, mentality. I'm here to learn. I'm here to learn what you need, what your community needs. I'm not going to go and shove my ideas in their faces because every school is different from elementary to middle to high, you know? So I try to um, really utilize and hope to get people's strengths and um, all on the team, not just from face, but like the schools you work with, right? Like, what are you, what do you have to offer to this project? I'm, I'm not the one, you know, driving the boat, so to say, but mm -hmm. everyone is together. Listening is everything. I mean, active listening, being present is probably the most important thing, like hearing what people are saying and taking that and building a better community because of it. I agree. Listening yeah. is top. Listening is key. Well, on that note, we also asked some of our city and school leaders to share what community means to them. So let's go ahead and listen to their responses and hear what they have to say. My name is Walter Dangos. I work for the city of Virginia Beach in IT as a system analyst. Hi, my name is Rachel Amato. I'm the district chef for Virginia Beach Office of Food Services. Community to me is about people. Growing up I and being an immigrant, I found that it was a strong connection to our community when we came over from the Philippines and found that it was the Filipino Americans and the military families and those communities that really helped us transition. And so to me, community is people my families, my peers, my friends, people. Community to me means a sense of belonging to a place or a people. It relates to where you feel accountability and want to show up for other people. Engagement is really what I think community means. I try to provide support to my community by giving them the same love and support that I receive in return by participating, being present for the people like my friends, my family, my peers. Everybody, I feel like, um, family and chosen family, right? Our friends and those kind of things. Um, also people we work with. Um, that's really where I feel like we find our community, where we find our sense of a belonging. Um, I love, uh, I ha my love language is quality time. And so if somebody's willing to spend quality time with me, um, I really invest in them as well. And so learning those love languages and really like investing in people, I think really shows support and it helps to engage in a community at a, diff at a smaller level. So COVID really tested the, the ideas of communities for me, it really caused me to reevaluate how I participate in those communities. Um, and a lot of it has transitioned really to the early days of COVID where everything was very much virtual and trying to navigate that environment and still provide a safe place to communicate with my friends, my family, and trying to keep that connection with them so that even though we may not be able to physically be with each other, that we're still connected, they still feel acknowledged, they still feel part of the community that we have. And I think those were the major hurdles when it came to community during COVID. Like I said, you know, just people showing up. Uh, what I love about our community at Virginia Beach, you know, in the city and in the school system, we show up, we're people who show up. Uh, when uh, the meaning of essential has changed, right? We're all very essential. And so um, that meaning of showing up for each other and that being tested through the traumatic event of COVID and the adversity that we've all faced in different phases of our life with COVID um, is really like 
pushed our community to the next level. And we, I see a lot more empathy for each other um, and our lives and what, what's going on. So. I really love their different definitions of community. Um, they really touch on both aspects that community is not only the people that you're around, um, but also people that you can have a sense of belonging to. And sometimes you don't always choose your community, but you can find those similarities to build on that relationship with. But I really think it's those small things that go a long way. Well, for me, uh, for me personally, the yoga and the fitness community has always been a big part of my life. Um, I've been teaching yoga for a long time, been doing it for almost 20 years. So any anytime I go anywhere new, I immediately just hit up a yoga studio first or I go to my gym. So um, because I know that the chances of me finding similar mindset and similar values and state of mind will be there. So um, yeah, it's helped me bond with a lot of people and make a, nice, a lot of nice connections because we have similar values. I have lived very, very many places, and every time, similar to what you said about just going out, I, I like to go and talk to people. I will make friends wherever place I end up at, whether it's a restaurant, the gym. I, in Norfolk, where I live, I was a member of like a club sport in college, and then I continued to play that sport at the, the league for the city, so I made friends through that. I worked in a restaurant, so I had all those friends, my sorority sisters and friends that I made through college are all local. I also play uh, tabletop games, so I go to the Slover Library and all of their community board postings, they have game days that you can go and talk out, and then also volunteer. So I volunteer with the Virginia Beach Rescue Squad, so it's a whole separate community in itself, just getting out there, getting, getting engaged with people. We are a digital society, Facebook, Nextdoor, all of these websites and apps, they have community postings. I mean, Facebook's got plant groups and yoga groups and cycle bar and all of these amazing little groups and pages that you can go and anyone's willing to go meet up with anyone. And then just now that everything's opened again following the pandemic, just getting out there, saying hi to someone, building that quick little connection, it's a good start piggybacking off of Megan, I think finding a hobby, right? Like yeah. for me, I'll mm -hmm. just obviously use myself as an example. For me, it's yoga. So I just kind of plug myself into a studio or I look for something online and I'm an instructor too. So I try to look for events that I could possibly teach at, you know, and then you meet more people and it, just, it becomes a ripple effect, but it's getting over the fear of yeah. like, of wanting to meeting someone and having talking to someone new. I personally can just talk to a wall <laughs> and someone, I'm not the first person who said that about me. So, um, yeah. Well, Miranda, I think you touched on it very well. It's about getting to know your community, right? And, um, if you're a parent, it's getting to know obviously your children's school in that community. And through the lens of that, I would say, um, we offer our, our website, which has um, tons of resources for parents, for students, for ELL. I mean, anything you're th you can think of, we have access to. And it's not just from the schools, it's actually from the city and different resources that have partnered with the schools to provide for the family, the school, the student, um, and the parents. But uh, we also have another app called the Volunteer Tracker that we are now implementing, so it helps keep, first of all, keep track and honor um, anybody who's volunteering, because in the end, if you get a lot of hours, we really want to honor you for that. So we do have like a volunteer of the year kind of thing. Also for students, they need a certain number of hours to graduate with honors or get on the transcripts. And also for parents or just, you know, retirees or grandparents, if they want to get involved, um, go to your, go to the, app, sign up, and then you can filter it, which is really great. Because if you're like, I don't want to read or I don't want to do this, it can you can customize your search and be able to do something that you enjoy. So on the city side, we have the Office of Volunteer Resources, which is the gateway for any volunteer in the community, or if you are in fact an employee and you want to get involved in all the different departments of the city government, we can get you a job reading in libraries or 
working with Parks and Rec doing beautification projects. So we have that kind of niche pathway that we can get you involved in the city and the community. And another initiative in our office is the neighborhood program. So we, I think, I believe the city manager's office just identified all the different neighborhood associations. And so that's a great way to get integrated into your neighborhood as well, getting up there, getting your voice heard, involved in your specific community. So in addition to today's discussion on community, we'd like to remind our employees of the resources that are available to them. If you or someone you know is in crisis, call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 988 and speak with a skilled trained counselor at a crisis center in your area anytime 24 seven. Virginia Beach City and school employees are encouraged to contact their employee assistance program through Optima EAP for short term counseling and a wide array of work-life services that can help you balance the many tasks you may have. Call them at 757-363-6777 or go to OptimaEAP.com. The Office of Volunteer Resources and Recovery is available to assist those impacted by the May 31, 2019 tragedy. Similarly to how the VB Strong Center provides assistance to individuals within the community, the focus of the Office of Volunteer Resources and Recovery is to assist individuals with getting connected to the aid that they need. Whether that aid is getting connected to the needed mental health supports, knowing who to talk to for having an issue addressed, or simply having an empathetic ear to speak to, the Office of Volunteer Resources and Recovery is here to help. Call them at 757-385-8826. Anyone can apply to be a volunteer either with the Office of Volunteer Resources and Recovery in their office or online at the website listed on the screen. You can call the Office of Volunteer Resources and Recovery at 757-385-4722 or email volunteer at vbgov.com. The Office of Family and Community Engagement exists to provide support and resources to VBCPS. Their resource site offers a wide range of information to all VBCPS families. They are also the main point of contact for organizations that would like to partner in a mutually beneficial way, such as giving real-life experiences to students in school. If you are interested, you can visit by scanning the QR code or call their office at 757-263-1821. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Life's a Beach, a forum for VB City and school staff to hear and participate in everyday discussions about how we're thinking, feeling, and doing. And speaking of VB City and school staff, we love to hear from you. Please fill out our mental and emotional health topic survey and tell us what you want to hear about in the future. You'll find the link in the description for this episode. And please remember to like this episode and subscribe to our VB Benefits YouTube channel. Just click that button. You can do it. We believe in you.